Um, so my research question I'm really looking at is, is there a difference in the average performance of high school males and females on standardized reading tests? Do notice that that's a two-tailed test. I'm not presuming that the males score higher or the females score higher, because I really uh, honestly don't know, or at least when I posed the question, I didn't know. Um, you could also do a left-tailed or a right-tailed uh, test if you wanted. For example, do males tend to score higher than females on standardized reading tests? Or do females tend to score higher than males on standardized reading tests? Um, so feel free to do whatever question seems to jump out at you most around that particular data set. Uh, my null hypothesis, null means nothing, so it'd mean nothing going on, no difference between the two groups. Uh, in other words, if I took the male average minus the female average, I would just get zero because they'd be the exact same number. The alternative is that they're not the same. They're not scoring the same on these tests. In other words, if I subtracted, I might get a negative number, I might get a positive number, but I wouldn't get zero. I'm doing a level of significance of 0 0.05. Um, you can pretty much copy my answers on the first couple assumptions. Uh, you may have slightly different thing on the third one and then on the fourth one you can also uh, say the maybe don't use my words exactly but you can use the basic gist of this. So the only one that might be slightly different for you is assumption three. Um, Moving on to step D, here's where we're going to actually conduct the test. So I'm going to go to the data set. If you don't already know what the different numbers represent on your variables, uh, so for me, I'm, I'm using base year sex, um, you should go to the code book, which there's a link to from lab one. It looks like this, and that will tell you uh, the different variables, or sorry, the different values of the variables. You don't need to worry about the missing data. I've already coded that out. So for me, one or female, two are, sorry, one or male, two are female. So if I go up to here, uh, analyze, compare means, I'm going to run an independent samples t-test. The grouping variable is going to be your nominal variable. Um, and then your scale variable here will go up at test. Uh, you do then need to click on this grouping variable to find the groups. Uh, here's where if you're doing, say, something like race that has seven different categories, you could pick the two that you're going to compare. In my case, I only have the two. So we'll say group one, the males, uh, group two, the females, and continue. Um, there's nothing really you need to do here, so click OK. And I should get two tests. I'm going to copy both of those into my lab report. So I pasted those in, a uh, little small, but I think they're readable. Uh, e, the degrees of freedom, I initially had gone with kind of the easy method that the both book mentioned, which is you take your smaller sample and then you subtract one from it, and that, that's kind of a rule of thumb, degrees of freedom. Uh, but since we have the SPSS output, we can use the more complicated formula, which does give us a more accurate degrees of freedom. Uh, we do want to make sure that we're not assuming the equal variances here. Uh, so we go to 15,139. So I'm just going to use that instead of the... And you can do the same thing. Use this number in the degrees of freedom under the equal variances, not assume category for your degrees of freedom. And then you're going to look up on table D. Um, so the, the one thing you do want to make sure is that you're looking in the right column. So I'm doing a two-tailed test at 0 0.05 level of significance. So I'd be in this third column. If you were doing a uh, left tail or a right tailed test based on whatever your research question was, uh, you'd have 0 0.05 in a single tail. So you would be in this second column over here. Uh, so because I am in this third column, I'm going all the way down. Uh, the degrees of freedom, it's never going to be infinity. Um, 
so just to be a little on the conservative side, we're going to pop up to the 1,000 here. Uh, if yours would be, if your degrees of freedom would be less than 1,000 from the SPSS output, then go wherever your degrees of freedom is and then go up to the nearest row. So in my case, I'm going up to 1,000. I'm right over here. 1.962 is my critical value, which means that my my T statistic, my test statistic that's getting created here by this SPSS uh, test that I'm running, needs to be at least higher than positive 1.962 or below negative 1.962. That's the two-tailed nature of my test. If this was a left-tailed test, I would need to be lower than whatever my critical t was. And if it was a right-tailed, I'd need to be higher than whatever this critical t is. So what is what is my actual t value? Well, I can look here on my output, and this is the column where I'm seeing my t test statistic. Again, I'm doing equal variances, not assumed, so it'd be that 0 0.909. And here you see that with a sample of this size, and especially with these variances pretty close, it really wouldn't have mattered what I chose. Um, I think the advantage of choosing this one is um, there's less, especially if I don't have really good justification for why the variances should be equal. Again, I'm being a little safer and, and more conservative as I conduct this test, um, which is typically good practice. So now the moment of truth, um, I look at my t statistics, sorry, right here, negative 9.09, uh, which is well below, uh, maybe I, yeah, you really should put this here, of negative 9.090. It's further out in the left tail than my critical value of negative 1.962. And again, uh, you see the positive version here, but because I'm doing a two-tailed test, I could reject either below the negative version of this or above the positive version. And, and in this case, I was well below the negative version. Uh, and that's, I, you can call that the rejection region if, if you're beyond your critical value, which, which I was. Uh, and that's because we're rejecting the null. What does that mean? Well, remember the null said that males and females were scoring equally, that there wasn't a difference between them. So by rejecting that, we're settling on, we're saying it's uh, very likely that the alternative hypothesis is true, and the alternative says that they were not different. Um, now, whether you then make the next step to say that our data suggests that males and females scored differently, or if you actually interpret it as a direction, there's some controversy around that. Um, I, th I think your book did suggest that you should only say that there's a difference if you did a two-sample test, or sorry, a two-tailed test. Uh, I I disagree with that. I think that you you can go ahead and say the direction because you have this confidence interval right here uh, that's telling you not only did we find a statistically significant difference, uh, but we're also 95% sure that the males are scoring between 1.2 and 1.8 points lower than the females. How did I know that it was the males scoring lower than the females and not the females scoring lower than the males? Um, honestly, I did that way back in the descriptives, remember we knew that the mean for the males was 49.8 and the mean for the females was 51.3. So from that point on, I knew that that in the sample the males were scoring lower than the females. I didn't know it was statistically significant until now. I mean, this tells me that we can be sure that that was a nationwide uh, pattern, not just one that we saw in these 15, 16,000 students. And, and we can also be sure that, uh, pretty sure, 95% confident that nationwide uh, for, for students who were sophomores in 2002, that the, the males were scoring 1.2 to 1.8 points uh, lower than the females. And, and when I say points, I mean 
the scale they were using for that standardized reading test, um, which I, I can't remember exactly, but ranged something from like 15 points up to something in the in the 80s. If if you would go uh, because this is a controversial issue, if you would have an answer that says uh, something like our data suggests that there is a difference between the two groups, but we don't know in which direction. We'd have to conduct a one-tailed test uh, to find that out. Um, because the book teaches that, I, I would uh, also accept that answer. Similarly, if on a test you would ever put something like this where you do interpret the direction of a two-tailed test um, and, and Hawks would count that wrong, uh, make sure you let me know because I would give you credit either way uh, again because I think there is justification to either argument there it's it's more how you how you view it oh and if you were paying attention at all to this stuff down here please don't that <laughs> this was all uh, this was all stuff from the previous lab so